All right, guys, today we're gonna to talk about the top five USA-made survival knives in my collection that I would recommend, and for the most part, recommend. And we're gonna get into just a little bit of a catch, I say, for the most part. But these are gonna be some awesome knives. They're all about the same size, except for the one compact offering that I have. Um, but yeah, so without any further ado, let's jump right into it. And we're gonna get into the first one being the exception. And this one is the Survive Knives GSO 5.1. Now, I will say some people have said they like the 5.5 or the GSO 5.5 um, and some other kind of varietals. For me, I still really do think that the uh, 5.1 is pretty darn solid for the GSO lineup and family. But this one, like I said, is a little bit of a catch because while I do genuinely recommend this knife and when I sit down and like honestly think about like the best survival knives that I have, especially that are USA made, but even just in general, the Survive knives do genuinely not disappoint. There's not a single person that you'll talk to um, that sits here and has anything bad to say about these actual knives. Like if you have a Survive knife, whether it's an EDC or a GSO, um, they're very, very, well-made knives. However, um, the issue is the company is very fraudulent. They're very, you know, uh, very questionable of integrity. And so when it comes down to it, when I recommend these knives, I do recommend them, but with the caveat that if you are going to buy a Survive GSO, luckily there is a plentiful enough secondary market, but I only recommend that you buy these on the secondary from someone who physically actually has it in their hand. Don't buy slots because I've heard some people too, primarily on the Survive knives fan page where they're like buying you know slots or spaces for these knives um, and so don't do that don't buy these knives directly from the company but if you do see someone on secondary um, on Instagram somewhere you know selling these and you can purchase it or obtain it that way I will say that a survive would be for a reasonable price a very good purchase now I got mine for around what I would say is about $280. Like I said, full disclosure, I've said in previous videos, I traded for mine, so I traded into this knife. So I did not purchase it, but I did trade a knife of equivocal value. So that's how I got mine. But a lot of times it's like I said, just if you're gonna get one, get one off of secondary market. Um, I did not, like I said, purchase mine from the company. The company did not send me one. I will not work with Survive Knives. Even if they emailed me today saying, hey, you know, we'll send you whatever knife you want. I would not work with this company because the company themselves is very questionable, but the knives that they do make are quality. So if you do end up with a chance to buy one, Survive is good but keep watching the video too because I have a competitor that in my opinion is better than the survive but offers a lot of the functional functionality of this knife all right next one up is going to be the compact knife choice for me and of course when we say compact you know we could be talking about smaller knives we could get into things that are even smaller than this something like the bark river knives rising wolf but i wanted to say for compact survival knives this is probably about the limit for me about a four and a half inch blade and a comparable handle now this is a tops field craft so you have a five inch blade four and a half sorry five inch handle, four and a half inch blade. So tons of sprawling space on this handle. And I really do love the Topps Fieldcraft. I think if you're looking for a compact survival knife, it's very hard to go wrong with the Fieldcraft. Um, as you can see, mine is definitely seen better days, but uh, it is, it's a workhorse. What can I say? Like, it's just a really solid knife. Now, the next one up is going to be the budget pick for me. And the, once again, this one's a little bit of a hard recommend, but I do, you can still find these. And if you can find it, I really do recommend it and that is the Ontario Knife Co um, Rat 7. Now hopefully Rat or Ontario was obtained or they the like license of them was bought out by Rowan which is a subsidiary of SE Knives which if you guys don't know about SE, SE was a true maker of the original Rat series because Rat stands for Randall or Randall's Adventure Training, and that is literally SE. So the, it will be interesting to see what happens to the RAT7 in the future, uh, but at least at this current time, you can still find RAT7s out there. They're made on 1075 high carbon, and they're usually under $100 pretty well. I think I paid like $69 for mine, so we're talking pretty darn budget blade for what you're getting. My car to handles, really good ergonomics, not as refined as an SE6 or really any SE at all, but it is functionally there and it's, it's a quality piece nonetheless. 
All right, so that leads me to the next knife, and that is the Bark River Knives Strike Force 2. Now, with Bark River, it's always hard because there are literally tons of good survival knives I could pick. Even the um, cub that I have would make a really good stand in for this. But I like the Strike Force. The blade inch is about six, or the blade length is about 6.75 inches. So you have a decently sized blade for doing a lot of work. Super comfy handle. If you know Bark River, they make some of the best ergonomics, at least in my opinion. I have never held a Bark River that didn't just absolutely fit in my hand like a glove. So I love that. I love the high um, convex grind on this guy. Of course, I'm a little biased to it because it's a very pretty knife, but it's also very functional. This one's in CPM 3V which is worth pointing out. Um, but yeah, this is a fantastic knife. Strike Force 2 gives you kind of that like tactical vibe because you have a swedge here and you have a little bit of a recurve, but it's very subtle recurve, so it's not really an issue to work around. And uh, yeah, there's plenty of performance locked in this blade. So very cool, very survival slash tactical blade. All right, now last one up and probably the number one for me. And like I said, this is where I'm like, listen up if you want a, you know, survive GSO. This for me is like the replacement in the holy grail to beating the survive GSO family. And this is the Architect Knives AK 6.5, but they also make the AK 5.5, they make a 4.5 and they make an eight inch and a few other models we won't go into here. So there are plenty of blade lengths for you to choose from. Now, as I've said in previous videos, if you're looking for something that is going to be comparable to the 5.1 GSO, I would recommend the 6.5. And that is because the 5.1 has a very generous um, forward finger choil. The AK 6.5 has a less generous finger choil, but still completely decent. Like you can easily put your finger in either of these finger choils, um, but very similar blade shape, very similar um, like jimping, very similar knives overall, of course. Of course. The 6.5, hopefully you guys can see here, will come out on top. You know, it is a bigger knife, but not by as much as you would think. So I think this, has got, this guy's pretty cool. It does obviously differentiate from the GSO because it actually uses more of a SE6 slash RAT7 styled handle. So you guys can see here the handle on this RAT7 is less like chamfered and stuff, so it's a little bit more blocky, but you can see that the actual shape of the handle is incredibly similar. So that's obviously on purpose. So this is definitely more reminiscent of an SC6 or a RAT7 in handle shape, but that is not a knock against it at all because they are very comfortable handles to hold for a long time. So this is a very interesting fusion project that Architect Knives is making. And uh, this one's cool. They are planning to make these in CPM Magna Cut. This one is a CPM 3V first run. That's what this little uh, inscription here is. Hopefully, yeah, oh, sorry, on this side, this is what the inscription is on this side. It just says first run, but uh, they are planning on making these in Magna Cut as well. So I think that's cool because like I've mentioned in previous videos, Videos, you know, um, GSO or Survive Knives with their GSO series. This one is made in Magna Cut and they also make them in CPM 3V. So realistically, like if you want a Survive, but you don't want to actually buy from the company and you can't find one on secondary, this is a really good option that you can get. And just as like a note for mine, um, I got mine start to finish, like from the time I ordered it to the time it was in my hands was, I want to say six days and not like six business days but like six physical days they literally got my order processed it had it shipped same day and i got it five days later so this thing is pretty darn cool and like i said the fact that there's such a high turnaround that you know you order it and it's in your hand in less than a week is something that really is a big deal for me because for me, like, as I've mentioned and told other people in the forums that are like, oh yeah, just wait five years to get your survive GSO. Like, you know, just do that. And it's like, well, that's great and all, but what am I gonna use? If I'm buying a knife from a company, I'm buying that knife so that I can go out into the field and use it. So actually getting your knife in a timely manner and you know, like it, it, in my time or my mindset, a timely manner would be like a month tops you know like that's a timely manner you know having to wait five years for a survive gso is um, just downright embarrassing so my opinion um, like i said architect knives with the ak 6.5 or the ak family as a whole 
is a huge winner for me. And even if you don't choose anything else from this list, um, I think that the Architect alone is a really cool knife and definitely worthwhile if you're looking at American brands for survival knives. But I'm not gonna make this all about the AK. That has been the coverage of five American-made, USA-made um, survival knives in my collection and ones that I use and think are pretty awesome. So anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless, and I'm out.